thank you, thank you for taking the time to uh, come here and yes, share I'm, your. Um, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Your new points and uh, could you tell us a little about uh, your group? Uh, what is the name of your group and what is purposes? And, uh, the, nothing historical. Just the name is the Center for the Hidden, the Center for the Inner Dimensions of Life. Okay. And the purpose is, yes, the group has been active long before it defined its purpose. Because group work today is a purpose in itself. It is a way in which uh, human communication is being developed because it is a mirror of what is going on in the ashrams. So you can say it's an externalization of the conditions of the astral, real group work. Group work is an externalization. Yeah. And it is, it's a, a very important detail behind the worldwide impulse towards group work, which you find everywhere. Okay. But in behind you have, you have an externalization of, of the work form in the hierarchy because it's always group work. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I understand you are the, you are the one who has initiated the group or taken the initiative I, to the group. Or, you might say that because it was gathered around my school. I had in the Theosophical uh, Society in Copenhagen. I had been running a school there, a esoteric school there for a number of years. And there were some disagreements between us and others. And we left. Yeah. And with me left uh, as a group of people. Okay, yeah. Who were co-workers in the center, like yeah. myself. Okay, yeah. But as I was the one who was at that time teaching and, and was a kind of, and therefore had a kind of central position, you could say that I was a leader or something. I, mean, I never was a leader, you know. We were a group from the beginning. Yeah. But, but many came there because of my teaching and because they wanted to have information, esoteric information, and so on. So this, this way I had a central position. Yeah, I heard Eva, she told uh, just earlier, Eva from your group, she told me that, that the group had experienced, a, I think she said a transition from a, she called a sixth ray to a seventh ray organization. Uh, yeah, do you agree you with can that? say that if, if you have a central person, you could also say you have some kind of sixth ray influence. Yes. Uh, because uh, idealism and, and, and worshipping and, and things like that is typical for sixth ray. Yeah. I wouldn't say worshipping, but you know. Having a central person and then others around would be a sixth way thing. Yes. And it has definitely turned into a group where we have what is called cooperative leadership. And it means that the person who is best suited for a, diff for a, a certain case is also the boss in that case. Yeah. And then you have another matter and another person who is a natural leader. And in this way they cooperate and you have what's called cooperative leadership. This is kind of the outer structure of the group, but there's also an inner one, which is dependent on evolutionary status. Some are longer on the way than others. Some have higher initiations than others. And in certain questions, it's absolutely necessary that the group recognize who it is and let them be the prominent ones in certain questions especially everything concerning the occult side, the hidden side, the yeah. spiritual side of the group life. Some will be more fitted for that than others. And they are those at top of the evolutionary level. So everybody in the group should and must recognize who is who and, and you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and how, yeah, I was thinking, how do you do that? How, how does the yeah, group but, but, you know, We work with things like that, we talk about it and and, and, and over the years it becomes more and more known who is what and, and also we have been through something which we could call maybe a group initiation yes. uh, which is uh, it doesn't mean that all group members take the same initiation it means that the preparations uh, are going on in group form but mm. each person takes the initiation which is the closest one and in many cases it's just the first initiation but it may also be the, the second and in very rare cases, it may be the third. Mm. So everybody prepare his or her own initiation, but but uh, it, it happens in group form, and it means that the experiences are shared in group form. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because of a particular mechanism 
in the good work, which I can tell you about later if you ask me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I would like to hear about the, the, the World Service Intergroup. You are, your group is a part of the World uh, Service Yeah, we were simply, I was invited to the first conclave. It was a time where my school and my esoteric work was sort of prominent in the group. And I was invited to participate in the very first conclave in, in Washington, D.C. And I went there. And I met with Gordon and, and, and a lot of other people, and, and I thought it was very interesting, so I stayed on. Yes. Since or I have been to all the conclaves until recently, where I simply can't afford it any longer. So I missed the one last year in Italy and the yeah. one before in London. Yeah. Otherwise, I've been to every conclave. Yeah. Since it's uh, 1996 uh, or something, it's, it's done. Yeah, I don't know. I how. Think it was, uh, and I was after the two or three years I was invited to, to join the steering group and I worked there for a number of years. Okay. But, but all that was dropped when we left the group, we left the steering group, my son and myself. We, Mess, my younger son, was also part of the steering group but because of some discrepancies of opinion and some things that we are not going to discuss, but there was some kind of of, uh, I wouldn't say hostility, but you know, we, we thought it was best to leave the steering group. Okay, yeah. Not yeah. the WSI, just the steering group. Yeah, yeah. And become uh, just members and just participate. Have you experienced any um, any change in your own group, uh, be, being a part of the WSI? As I do, it is does it reflect anything? difficult to say what is what. You yeah. Know, because we, we really work as a group. Uh, we're doing the things which esoterically or awkwardly is you have to do if you want to use the word the group. There are some more lesser known factors which we observe. So it's difficult to say what is what. Yeah. But of course it has been a great experience to meet with many people from other countries with a somewhat same interest. Yeah. And sit in a group with a like this about more than hundred people meditating on the same subject, same subject, you you can never f do that any other no, place, no, no. Or not a hundred persons. And over the years, it has been 50, 60, 70, 80 persons. And there's also a lot of people meditating yeah. on the same subject. And mm -hmm. some of those uh, meditating are very good at it. Yeah, they are very experienced and they have a high level, and they sort of help lifting the group field as a whole. And you join that when you go into it. You mm. sort of lift it up if you need that. What do you see as a, what do you see as the impact of such a, a happening or event as hundred people meditating together? What is uh, does it have uh, any effects globally? It's a higher a higher vibe, a higher frequency of consciousness. Your own consciousness is cleared up and you have ability to get closer to your soul and usually because it is empowered somehow by the group. A field, especially those who are of a higher evolutionary level than the others. There will always be differences between people in this business. And the problem with this business, I mean the esoteric business, yes, um, is that you have words for it. In society in general, there are a huge differences on people who don't have words for it. Here we have the word yeah. initiation, yeah. and we have discipleship phases. And those are exact measurements of your status. Yes, is that a problem? It's a problem because uh, there's nothing to discuss and therefore you always keep initiation status secret. Because the moment, let's say, I knew that you have a higher initiation than I have, it is an absolute fact that you are more advanced than I am. And there may be situations where I do not want to admit that. Okay. Let's say we disagree on anything and you say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just higher than you. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's, it, many people cannot really handle such a factual thing no. when you get down to your level of evolution. You want it to be somewhat uncertain yeah. because you have your hopes and your dreams and, mm -hmm. and you do not want to be told that you are this and this and he is this and this mm -hmm. and that. Do you see any, so that's uh, the problematic side of this uh, status thing you would say? It's, it, it, it's, the status is a fact, yeah. because it's, it's something which comes from the hierarchy. Yeah. There's nothing to do about it, but you just 
don't talk about it. This is this very wise thing. It's, it's not secret, you just don't mention it. And many people do not know about it and they do not know about their own status. It takes a little bit of experience to find that out because you have to know the, 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 the qualities needed to have a certain level. And it is not a very closely defined thing, you know. There may be very variations and things like that, which uh, makes it a little more different. Mm. Do, you, do you see any possibilities, maybe on a longer term, maybe yeah, a number of years from now, do you see any possibilities in the, um, this uh, initiation levels, if, if, if it was made public? Do, or, uh, yeah, it is public already in the books. Yeah, but, but if it's But your own status is not public. No. But mm -hmm. it, it has a great advantage that it's very precise. So the, the, the qualities for a definite initiation is very precisely described. Yes. So if you know about it and know where about you are, you would know exactly well what you have to do next. Okay. Yeah. And th this is not always easy. So if you don't know and not aware of it, you may do something which you don't need to do because you've already done them. Or you're doing something which far, is far ahead yeah. and you, you will not be able to cope with it. So you can, if you know the status, you can very precisely say exactly what to do yeah. in the field of, 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 of personality development mm. and character building and things yeah. like that. Yeah. It's a very precise way, but it's not not, it, it's a bit uncomfortable for some people because they want not to be too sure about it. Otherwise you can't dream of anything higher, but, but you know, I it's only dream. human. We are humans, all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and some want to, to, to have it a little bit secret and, 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 and dream of, maybe, maybe I have this and this and maybe yeah. I'm yeah. this and that. This, we, is, this is just like everybody else. Okay. Yeah. We have this uh, in the esoteric tradition and also in the WSI group, there is this key concept of the reappearance of the Christ. It is uh, the purpose to work for it. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah, the only purpose. Oh, okay, like. it's the main... Yeah, the this is what it's about. Okay. We are helping preparing the reappearance of the Christ. How, yeah. how would you uh, describe... The, uh, what is your understanding of this? Uh, yeah, it is, to me, I've been a esotericist many, many years. And to me, the reappearance of Christ is very concrete. A man is stepping forward, and he is the Christ. Because esoterically, we know that Christ is a very high master, and he occupies a physical body. He is beyond the stage where you are born by a woman. So he has a physical body, which is a manifested thought form. But it is in flesh and blood. Mm. And shake his hand. Hmm. You can see him smile and, and things like that. You can feel his enormous radiation. So, I believe that this physical body of the individuality called Christ will step forward, take on his tie and jacket and take the plane from Tibet and appear on the world stage in a, in a way that he chooses. Okay. Yeah. But I think he will be a little withdrawn in the beginning they say something, the books say something like, those who know him will recognize him, but not others. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be a little withdrawn to, to, in the beginning, because otherwise it would be impractical. Mm. But over the years, his work will disclose him. His work will be such that many people realize whom we are talking about. You know, Jesus was known by his miracles and things like that. Yeah. That Christ is far higher than Jesus was at that time. This was the disciple of Jesus, overshadowed by the Christ. This time the Christ himself comes out, and it is his own physical body. I believe that. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, I don't think anybody can imagine his radiation. This is it it's is enormous. Let, let's just, uh, if, if we try to, what do you think the world would, would look like when it happens? Yeah, we, I'm sure that he has some, some criteria for his appearance. Something has to be in order. We don't know what and how much, <coughs> because we do not expect to have a perfect world at that time. But I think some things must be more in order than it is now. The lower, I think the possibility of war and things like that should be somehow outgrouped. Mm. Maybe a field like the Middle East has to be more clear. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Maybe 
there needs to be a shift in, in, in for instance, the American United States attitude. And that is, as a matter of fact, that is something we know a little bit about. Uh, if you're interested, I can explain what it is we know. Yeah, uh, are you? Yeah, I would like it's to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a politics. Uh, you know, it's an esoteric, it's in the teaching, esoteric teaching, that the contact to the soul goes through a, com uh, a combination of personality and soul. Yes. And in order to do that, you have to have polarity between the energy of the soul and the energy of the personality. And it requires that the personality is what we call integrated. It is made whole, yes. so that you don't think one, feel some other, and do some third. Integration means that the personality becomes a, a, a magnetic pole, which is opposed to the pole of the, of the soul. Hmm. And that draws an energy between them, and it means that the soul will become, become uh, will appear in your brain consciousness. Hmm. Can you compare it to the sun and the moon? <coughs> the moon is the personality. <coughs> Sorry. So. Um, I, I don't see how, but you know, if you take your own consciousness now, and mine, and probably also yours, uh, you will have a, an open contact between your brain and your emotional life in the astral body and your mental life in the mental body. But you will know how to not have an, an open communication with your soul and the soul body. We don't have that. So that is the goal of spiritual development, mm. to develop that. And we call building the thread or the Antakara, yeah. as it's called. And it means that suddenly soul is present in your brain awareness. Yeah. And how, it, how's that experienced? How do you experience that? It, 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 you know, the soul is far higher than anything else you have. Okay, it yeah. means that your whole mental life and your ideas you get shift on an, up to another level. Hmm. Also a higher degree of abstraction. But you will turn into a completely different person. Because you are not longer a personality, you are a soul with a personality. So this integration of the personality is absolutely necessary for this to happen. Otherwise, there is no polarity between soul and personality, and the spark will not be drawn. Okay. What we know now politically is that if you take the United States population as a whole, you can say it has a personality. And what we are told is that this personality is going to be integrated from 2012. And it means that it will be possible for the American nation to have contact with its soul. And its soul ray is the second ray of love wisdom. And you can imagine what happens when the United States become mm. a loving, wise nation. Can you cannot yeah. imagine what difference it will make mm. because it's, it's so prominent in the world for yeah. affairs already now. Yeah. But the moment it has been nothing but love, yeah. it, it can it will have a huge... Uh, yeah. This nation alone may be able to change the world. Yeah. And this may be one of the things that the Christ is waiting for, because it, it will create a completely different climate. And then you can see this uh, problematic military that they have. It can be used for very good purposes uh, against little states who do not want to cooperate. And, and we can just say, Oh, do you want to do it yourself, or should we come and help you? You know, and they would know that it means also military if necessary. Yeah. But it, so it will exert a certain pressure on those nations which are too selfish to cooperate, to to stay passive and not interfere and not make troubles and not make war. So, so the military will be used for uh, yeah, small military purposes. Military purposes. Uh, yeah. So it could be as a means of pressure, a mild pressure, yeah. uh, but it could also be mean to as a help in, 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 in catastrophic situations. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, you have a, a huge flood in Africa, yeah. and millions of people are homeless yeah, and yeah, without yeah. food. Yeah. And three air carriers, what you call it, hangar ships from American Navy, comes yeah. down there, and the the yeah, air is black with helicopters yeah. flying and dropping food and yeah. everything. And they are the military are building bridges over mm. there. You know, they can build a bridge over anything yeah. in 24 hours. Yeah. This is a task they know. Yeah. Yeah. They are so efficient, the military. They can do all technical things. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and you, you imagine if you have the European forces, American forces put together, Canadian, Indian forces, mm. 
you would have a, a corpse of of serving people without people. You would never have seen anything like that in efficiency and and and. And it would also be a good experience for American pilots to fly in some food instead of trying to kill someone. Mm. This is what they usually do or threaten someone. They mm. say, oh, I've been in Africa and like, we flew in tons and tons of food and, and people were really happy about it and that was a good experience for me. Uh, so it, it would also change the nature of the soldiers and, and, and the whole thing. So it, it is not a dream, this, this is really possible. Yeah. Because they have that military yeah. and they can really do this thing. So the only thing which is lacking, as Olaf Palme would say, is will. Is will? Will. Is, uh -huh. I think Olaf Palme, the Swedish mm. prime minister, would say it's a question of political will. Mm. Do we then want to do it or it not? It it's be not be a question if it is possible. It will, and you say, yeah, it will be interesting to yeah. see from the. We will do it. Yeah. yeah. We, so we can do it. Yeah, sure. Because we have the means of doing it. So this is a little peep into the, 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 the international situation around mm -hmm. the Arabians. We don't know how much, but of course it is very decisive for a man or for the hierarchy or whatever you say, to know that America will turn over from its sixth ray personality to its second ray. So because the sixth ray is, it can be very, 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 uh, Fanatic. As we have seen, yeah. And yeah. you have seen yeah. that fanatical yeah. capitalism or something yeah. like that. And very demanding and also very violent. Mm. And America has yeah. been very violent. Yeah. It has also done a lot of good things. But always interfere mm. whether it's oil and always my American military 10 minutes later. And there are all these excuses and, and rationalizations and all that. That would gradually disappear and we would just have a loving friend which stretches out his hand, and a hand which is enormous possibility. Mm -hmm. America has such enormous possibilities, production capacity and, and riches and, and, and knowledge and, and all you need. So this is a very important factor, we think. Yeah. I think it is really a part of the reappearance of the Christ, yeah. because that one nation can do almost unlimited. Thank you very much, Nils. We uh, we are out of time now, and uh, so uh, thank you for the thank you cooperation. <laughs>